Good evening, one and all. We are back yep. again. Uh, I have dried off, uh, quenched the sweat, so to speak. The palms are now dry, and the celebrations of yet another victory go on. Um, Alex, uh, that was a bit of a well, a roller coaster, shall we say? Uh, but again, uh, the guys just shown how much the, the they wanted it, so how much they are together. And you know, Chris Wood scoring his first goal, Bruno scoring a, an absolute gem. Um, brilliant. No, yeah, they definitely showed it. I mean, Woods Woods been steadily improving um, in the last week or so. I, I felt like that was definitely coming, especially mm-hmm. with his positioning for last week. Um, and yeah, just some of the lads, even the lads that had a poor day, were putting in some right challenges, and they, you know, what they were lacking in quality, some of them were trying to make up for it. And you know, we'll yeah. always appreciate that in this fan base. If you try, then fair enough and they did they tried uh i mean down our down their left hand side our right hand side i think that we were very vulnerable um down that side i think craft and murphy were um they were, they were clearly targeting that side with walker peters finding so much space um but you know i, I did see on the watch along you know that the, the there were our weak link tonight down that right hand side however you know, the, the, we won again. I mean, you know, it's 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 like you know, you, it's very very hard to criticize anybody when they put in a shift like that. And nobody can say Murphy didn't put a shift in. Nobody can say Kraft didn't put a shift in because they did. Um, yeah. Look, at the end of the day, we know Kraft isn't going to be the, the the future right back of this football club. That we know that. But while he's in the team, we've got to support him. And so many people before the watch along were commenting saying, you know, no S- no ASM, no Joe Litton. Um, you know, be happy to take a point out of this. I mean, I would have been happy to take a point if I'm honest. But then, you know, we we, we go a goal down, we suddenly get back into the game. Uh, brilliant cross, by the way, from John Joe. Um, and, and still I was seeing negative comments about John Joe tonight, and it really does my head in. Because, yes, he gave the ball away a couple of times. But, listen, the footballers, they're going to give the ball away. But he, he, he produced a brilliant cross for that goal. Um, and I thought, he, defensively, he was working his ass off again. Yeah, indeed. I mean, yeah, there were massive problems with Willock and Shelby. But the way that we set up is with Joe Linton to mm. cover. There's a system there. You know, Joe uh, and, and you know Willock has his strengths and weaknesses, as does Shelby. Um, and Joe Linton helps to offset and have a nice, fluid, functional midfield. Um, yeah. It's not that they're doing anything wrong on purpose. It's mm-hmm. we've had to change it through what I can only assume is a is a quite a late injury um, to to Joe Linton. So they didn't quite have that protection that they normally have. Willock was being asked to do more of what he was trying to do, you know, three months ago. And he doesn't. He doesn't like doing that. He likes being a free box to box, which he, he got more luck with later on in the game. Yeah. Um, Shelby wasn't getting time on the ball. He had one one long ball today, uh-huh. which you know they they know what our game was and they planned for it. Yeah. Uh, and again, Bruno, he's a small lad. Um, I would have liked to have seen his debut come with Joe Linton near him, 
because he was getting clattered. Yeah, he needed that um, protection, didn't he? I can't, I can't blame him for that. He was yeah. just—they were, they were. It was. Um, and it's again, it's not House' fault. He was forced into the lineup and the substitutions. You know what? What else was he going to do? Was he going to put Longstaff in ahead? You know, he, he's doing what he can with what he's got available, and the lads mm-hmm. played really well. So, fair enough to him. Yeah, I mean, what did you make of um, Joe Willock tonight? Because I thought he, he was. Again, he worked his sudden ass off. Um, just before we go, uh, Caitlin and Nick, thank you for your five pound super chat. Uh, a slice of our winnings for our favorite channel. Loved Bruno's goals and your commentary, Paul. Thanks very much. Really appreciate that. Um, yeah, he, he, he gives. I said a few times during the commentary that he he, he he does give this sign that he's just not bothered when he's running. He, he's got a funny running style. But yeah. there was a couple of times in the second half, he got to the ball and took players on, and he looked very dangerous. Yeah, I mean, there seems to be two clear players with Willock. There seems to be the centre midfield Willock, who's poor, and then there seems to be the box to box Willock, who is good. And mm. sometimes he switches between the two, and it's it's very weird. He's very hot and cold in the same, even in the same ten minute period. He's Jekyll and Hyde. Mm. Um, uh, I was very, I mean, I'm really disappointed to see that we won zero aerial duels in the middle of the park today which just shows how much we miss Joe Linton. Nobody yeah. to break up yeah. the play and win the ball. Uh, I think we tried... They're not uh, big guys, to be fair. Though. Other than, you know, the three of them in midfield today, they're not big guys. Um, you know, I mean, They only attempted uh, three. Wow, yeah. And two oh. of them were from Bruno, who's probably one of the smallest lads on the pitch. So, th- um, you know, but again, they tried. Willock picked it up a little bit. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know if you saw in the first half... Hal pulled, Hal pulled Willock over on the 40 minute mark and always he's not happy with him at all. Yeah. Um, things needed shuffling around, but you know, the, the again, effort they try, they tried. Um, the, the lads are aware of where the deficiencies are now and they are working on them, so I can't fault them for that. They are trying. Yeah. I mean, listen, that, that is the sign of the manager, though, isn't it? You're pulling Eddie how Eddie how pulling Willock across. And he didn't care whether the cameras were there or not. He'll bollock a player if he needs bollock and if he's not doing what he's told. Um, and really, at, at that stage, we needed to hang on and go into that dressing room level. Um, you know, and, and again, Southampton came out for the second half, first five, six, seven minutes of that half, dominated. Looked like they were going to be the team that would score. But then suddenly, the next 10, 15 minutes was all Newcastle. But it was only a quick blast of a 10, 15 minute, and then we were on the back foot again. But this side... We just don't die. We just don't surrender. And and that's what the thing is about Newcastle United at the minute. Uh, v, thank you very much for your 899 Super Chat. Uh, Favourite win so far. Pissed off Pot Noodle and beat Southampton at home with their record. How are the lads? Um, Bradley Big Toe, thank you for your Swedish kroner of 109. Swedish kroner, thank you very much. Thank you for a kick-ass watch along as always, mate. Thank you. It was a pleasure. And Santosh, thank you for your $5 Super Chat. Uh, amazing win. Uh, Alex, some stats of Bruno on today's game, please. Yeah, so he scored. It's, um, nothing else. He, he <laughs> nothing else matters. Well, uh, I mean, the goal. If we we start with the goal, I mean, that's why you pay. That's why you. That's why you open your wallet. So mm. all of the people in January, pre-January, post-January, saying, "Oh, Europe, France, farmers' leagues," all of these comments. That's why we pay the money because that's what they can do. These players have quality who play in the Champions League and play for their national teams. It's there. It's not just made up. Um, so yes, we can see parts of his game that maybe need working on. He's the physicality was a bit tough for him today, but that you can see the you quality. You expect that, though, don't you? You, you? you expect that when when he's just starting off in the Premier League, he will get used to that. He will bulk himself up. I've no doubt about it. Yeah, and he he threw himself about. He he went up for headers against mm-hmm. against taller people. Um, he was trying very, very hard. Um, his vision's good as well. He, his, his vision to, to pick a pass out looks really good. Uh, there was one in, the, I think, the first half for Willock. Um, he, he just sort of played it through about three Southampton players and Willock was just suddenly in acres of space, which was it was just remarkable. Um, Shane over in Australia says, I wouldn't want to be Ralph Hassan right now. Uh, good one, good one. Um yeah, everybody's having a good... It, it, it had to be, didn't it? You know, we beat them and two of our new sign and score. I mean, it was just... It was written in yeah, the stars. Yeah, we said this last night, didn't we? Yeah. 
Um, Jim says, and we only went and won our new with our new signings. Old Ralphie will be fuming. He didn't look happy at the end. He was grinding his teeth, sitting in the dugout. He wasn't happy. Uh, Ian says, bear in mind, we haven't actually opened the checkbook yet. That January outlay was just the cash lying around from Ashley. <laughs> Probably. Uh, without Kieran, Callum, ASM and Big Joe, yet we win away to Southampton, who hold an impressive home record. Only their second defeat of the season at home. Uh, so we, we have to be very, very proud of that. Very proud. Um, but anyhow, oh my God, talk about exceeding expectations. What a signing. Um, I've seen a few comments going on tonight think, saying that, you know, Eddie Howe could be the next Kevin Keegan at this club. Um, the, the, the sky's the limit for Eddie Howe, isn't it? I mean, he's got an he's got an opportunity to become an absolute legend here. Yeah, definitely. I mean, he's not he's not had much to do tactically recently. Um, he, he's well, that's credit to him for putting in the tactical foundations uh, four, five, six weeks ago. So in the last yeah. couple of weeks, the teams typically picked itself apart from two or three decisions, you know, based on injuries. But, you know, he is aware of the threats. I, I love I love how active they are on the touchline. Um, mm. If things aren't happening, this is something that didn't happen under previous managers is, you know, us fans are sat there screaming in the stadium or at home and there's no instructions going out to, to fix things. Whereas um, how and Tyndall are constantly pulling players over when it goes out, you know, you need to mm. pick him up or you need to move there. Uh, they need to take a lot of credit for it because, well, you know, we have had a bit of luck, a bit of quality, a bit of hard work. Uh, but ultimately, you know, there's a lot of it's down to his his tactics and their and then you know, in game management is is very tidy as well. They're very patient and they make the right decisions. Yeah, um, and I'm going to shout out uh, Fabian Shah tonight because I thought he was outstanding um, yet again. Um, Dan Byrne, I know he did give the ball away a couple of times, but again, his tackling, you know, he, he, there was once in the second half, he just didn't give up. Um, and, he, he, you know, the, the player got round him, but he stuck that bloody 90-inch leg around him and, yeah, and played it for ferocious. a corner. Um, but Fabian Shah, twice in the first half, went down injured. Uh, it clearly had an injury. Um, but that man at the mid just has, he, he just goes to war for Newcastle United every single game. He puts his head where it hurts. He's not frightened of getting injured. He, he's just everywhere at the minute, Alex. And he's just that defender that we always knew was there. But Eddie Howe seems to be bringing much, much more out of him now. Yeah, definitely. I mean, he must be getting sick of looking after the children because, you know, he had to, he's had to look after Lascelles in the past. And mm. there were a few times when he was just just got injured he had to keep stepping out into the right mid to clean up what Kraft and Murphy were were not dealing with on on occasion um and he statistically he, he managed to get four long balls today despite you know despite it being a very tough game for us uh, he won all of his duels on the ground and in the air really really solid uh, a couple of his passes go awry sometimes, but that's because he's the one with the license to try and play those passes. He's been given the job of, mm. if you see the risky pass, if you want to try it, try it. You know, that's that's what he's there to do. Um, so sometimes it goes wrong, but, you know, that's football. So uh, My target was sound again tonight. Um, I loved that tackle he made in the second half uh, when we were when we were on top for that little bit of uh, that period of time. And he, he must have gone onto his arse about 10 yards away from the tackle and just slid in and still won the ball. It was the most bizarre thing. Um, but I think stand out again, I mean, Dubravka played a massive game tonight. I mean, he was just um, some of the saves. He commanded the box very, very well tonight. Um, again, but we seem to defend uh, as a unit. And, it, you know, even Kraft, to his credit, you know, when he was getting taken on, he would still go back and, you know, he'd, he'd put a challenge in and it would go out for a corner. So he, 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 despite the fact he would get beat, he'd still get back and, and, and make a challenge. Um, and, and obviously it, it paid, you know, he got injured. But um, it's that kind of um, never-say-die attitude for our defenders and our goalkeeper. Yeah, I mean, Dubravka grew into the game a lot as a keeper. He, he He's looked a bit nervy, but... He definitely looked a lot better towards the end of the game. He was he was confident, getting strong hands to things. And um, although, although you've mentioned it before, when we're trying to time waste, he, he boots it out quick. And I don't know why he does that. He did it in injury time. He, he laid on it and then he just booted it straight up field. Yeah, um, I didn't I'd, quite understand that. I think he was um, thinking that somebody was running for the corner flag. Um, yeah, maybe. 
But we, we, we didn't, even, we didn't even do that, to be fair, when we, we only had the chance to run at the corner flag. There was the times when Miggy and Willock were down there, and I'm thinking, just keep it in the corner. And they kept turning and cutting in. And, um, yeah, I mean, I think I think Hal will have had a word with Willock about that because he got to yeah. the edge of the 18-yard box and he had a decision to make, whether he wanted to go corner flag or drive into the box. And he drove into the box and he lost the ball. So I'm sure Hal's going to mention it to him. I mean, yeah. fair enough. He's an attacking player, I guess. You know, I think he, he fancied a goal, it. didn't he? He did fancy a yeah. goal. Um, and that little bit of effort in the second half when he he, he took a couple of players on and Bednarik, Bednarik came in and, um, well, I mean, I don't think he touched him, but it was the fact that he flew in at him and, and Willock played for the foul. Um, I think had he got round Bednarik there, he was clean through. Um, that would have been an incredible yeah. opportunity. Um, but, you know, it, it's just one of them things, I guess. Um yeah, he didn't quite uh, have enough legs left to do normal Willock things because yeah. of how hard the game was, you know, which is not completely down to him. That's not his fault. It's just incredible the the way, like, he runs. I mean, it is bizarre. I find it very strange. He gives that impression that he's not trying. And and I've I've come round to, to, to accept that's how he plays now. That, it's that, like that's a lanky Berbatov persona. kind of run, isn't it? Yeah, very similar to Chris yeah. Waddle used to be. When you used to look at Chris Waddle and you think, he just can't be arsed. But then suddenly he would just spring into action like a like a rabbit in a headlight and it just whoosh he's gone. Um Vase is mind boggling how many games we've gone unbeaten. Uh, Ian Toon Raider, uh, Toon Trader says, Good evening, lads and lasses. What a win. That was proper. Enjoyed that. What a goal by Bruno and a top performance by Wood. Looked a yard sharper. Um Good. bring on Chelsky. We're not afraid. Uh, brilliant win. Wasn't the prettiest. Bruno goal was, but we grinded out another result. Dubes was immense. Uh, Mitchell says, great commentary as usual, Paul. Thank you, mate. Uh, Barbara says, uh, I have to say, I did predict 2-1 score to the tune. And I have to say, what brilliant, hilarious commentary by Paul. What a gem you are. Thanks, Barbara. <laughs> really nice. Manchester Max, is anyone else looking forward to seeing the winning team pick? Oh, my God. Yeah. I mean, the, the celebration again in the dressing room. I'm just looking at the table now, Alex. 14th, 31 points. Uh, we're 10 clear of Burnley now. Uh I'd be staggered if we get draw, dragged back into this. I really would, because for me, uh, Everton are really in trouble, uh, really trouble. Uh, Leeds lost the last five games. They're in real trouble as well. Um, I think Norwich are gone. Uh, Watford still have a bit of fight about them, but I'm not sure. But Everton and Leeds, I'd be worried if I was a fan of them right now, because it seems to me the bottom five, are starting to get adrift a little bit. There's four points now between Leeds and Brentford. Yeah, indeed. I mean, I'm pretty sure we've got games in hand on um, on Brentford and Leeds. So if we can... Uh, we've played 27. Uh, Everton have only played 25. So they've still got... Uh, well, they've, yeah, they've Brent, got, Brentford they've, and Leeds, though. Yeah, I think they've, they've got three games. More. Everton have got three games in hand on Brentford and Leeds. But it's all about winning. You know, it's, yeah. it's getting the points in the bag. I, mean, which I, only are... care, I only care about us in relation to those exactly. three. I don't, I don't I care mean, who gets dragged in as long as it's not us. Well, Everton for me, I don't, you know, but uh, let's just wait and see. Uh, Troll says, don't want to eat your shayet with chopsticks, though, Paul. I said something about that. I don't know. Uh, even all, what a result. Uh, didn't see it coming after the start, but whatever Eddie said at half time certainly worked. Um, I don't think it was just half time. But yeah, you, you have to. You have to see Eddie on the bench, though, Alex, because when he's well, he's not on the bench. He never sits down, does he? When he's when he's on that sideline, he is constantly going at his players. He expects the very best from them, and he won't let he won't settle for second best if they're not putting it in. Like he dragged Willard across tonight, he will speak to them. Yeah, well, at the end of the day, he doesn't want to lose the game either. So if he can see a way to improve it and a way to to change things, he will do that in real time, and that's what that's why he does it. Um, it's just a bit more obvious. It's a bit more obvious when you're in the stadium, of course. We can't see it as much on 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 the telly, so the away fans might have seen a bit more. Mm. Um, but yeah, I don't know why previous managers haven't done this for us, because it it you know, uh, and especially you know people who people who are unsure when we question players' performances or when we happy when we're happy with players' performances, uh, a good way to judge that is how the manager's looking at them when they're on the pitch and what it, mm -hmm. are their instructions? Are they not? Are they shouting? You know, is there is there shouting going on? Um, you know, it's a good a good clue. But no, it was it was great. The lads were listening to instructions as well. People were dropping into shape. I'm not sure what we were doing with our shape today. First half, we defended in a four five one, then a four three three, then it bent to a four four two at one point. Um, I'm not sure if that's on purpose. If it was just 
they've been told to be flexible and yep. drop in where needed. Um, but we were very, yeah, there was a lot of movement going on in the defensive shape. It was very interesting. Um, we're not yeah. used to all this, though, are we? We're not. We're, we're not used to the we team changing shape and actually <laughs> um, tactics happening in front of our eyes. You know, previous regime, it was like get out there, just stick to the one tactic, and nothing ever changed. Um, yeah. But Eddie Howe is, it, it, and Jason Tindall, to be fair, they're both standing there. They're both seeing what's going wrong or seeing what's going right. Um, and they put it right, or they do the, attempt to put it right straight away. It's not like the, the, the you know, the, they'll say, oh, we'll, we'll wait till we get the lads in the dressing room. It, it, it's not happening like that. It's happening on the pitch. Yeah. I mean, they're handicapped in a way because of the, the depth of the, of the bench. Um, in recent weeks, you know, we've been able to look to the bench for Bruno to come on and quiet the game down. Whereas yeah. Bruno was on the pitch today with Joe Linton out. So we have to look to Joe Linton, uh, sorry, not Joe Linton. We have to look to Sean Long, Longstaff and well, not really anybody else to come on for mm. that. Um, and Sean did okay. I think he, a couple of heavy touches, but he didn't do anything particularly wrong. And he, you know, grinded with he was, the team. Uh, he was neutral for me, um, but I mean, he didn't really, um, you know, he, he gave that. You know, he was start. He was he, he, for me, Sean Longstaff. When he's he's trying to win the ball and stuff, when he's defending, he reminds me of the old Shelby who used to go down on his hunches and just say, "Oh, I kind of get that. I kind of get that." And it, it just, for me, it's not there with Sean at the minute. And you know, I think he might be coming to the realization that um, you know, d- despite what Eddie Howe said about him in the in the press conference, he's got a future at the club. It's very hard to see how, given the players that are going to be coming in and the players that we've got already that are outperforming and week in, week out. Um, I think he's I mean, got a really tough ask. He's homegrown, that's the thing. He's English and he's homegrown, so we do have to, you know, bear in mind a few of these things, especially when it comes down yeah. to, to yeah. squad registration. So that might be a reason. Um, and I don't know, yeah, I'm, I'm not going to judge him based on those minutes because he came on to a, he came on into a horrible game. Like, that was a hard game. Um, so ultimately I'll, I'll, I'll give him, I'm going to give Sean another chance because he's had five or six weeks in training. He's all the pressures off now. You know, we've, we haven't got relegation staring us right in the face. You know, we're not necessarily safe, but we're, we're doing all right. So, um, you know, if, if in this, uh, congested little list, if he gets some minutes, um, we'll see if he can do what Eddie Howes said he can do. Mm. I'll give him another go. Why not? Yeah. Um, yep. and then we'll see. Um, Kendall says, just popping the kettle on for a pot noodle, Hassan Hoodle, Bombay, bad boy. Tastes of salt. Uh, Ken says, what a result. The lads are fighting so hard uh, and getting their rewards. Eddie Howe got to be manager of the year and amazing coaches. Um, hi, Paul and all others. Uh, what an amazing game. What an amazing goals. Shame I haven't heard if F you, but I arrived 13th of May. Hope to meet up. NUFC is surely safe now. Uh, yes, I do. And I, I will get back to you on that one. Um, Happy as Fook, uh, we never got Dick Emery as manager, as I don't think he could lick the boots of Howe and his team. Yep. Uh, remember how down we were a few months ago? The mood was, we are relegated. Uh, listen, I, I know a lot of fans, you know, we, we did say we're going down, and, it, you know, it, it was bleak. It was bleak. And I think that was because we just couldn't see Eddie Howe getting a tune out of these players that he was left with. Uh, but he has. Um, now, that, for me, just says how poor the previous manager was as well, that he wasn't able to get this kind of performance uh, out of the team or the kind of togetherness that the team has now. Um, it was very much a, a you know a one-man band. It was sort of give the ball to Maxi and let him run at the players. Uh, it's not like that now. It's a team ethic. It's a team game. Um, everybody's pulling in the right direction. Um, obviously, the rumours about Maxi kicked off again tonight. Why was he there? You know, is he ill and all this kind of crap? Look, if Eddie Howe says he's ill, he's ill. Um, and, you know, it, it was disappointing that he wasn't there because I'm sure we could have used him as an outlet in the second half. Uh, and he would have been a very good outlet to have, similar to what uh, what happened against Brighton, Alex. Yeah, I mean, possibly Brighton and Southampton fans aren't going to like my take on this, but I feel like if we had Callum Wilson, Maxi, and Joe Linton, I feel like we beat both of those comfortably. Mm-hmm. Um, I really do, because I feel like we have more control, we have more quality, we have more danger at dribbling. Um, you know, we're getting these wins without these players. So, you know, yeah. we, we, we're definitely missing them. But the lads who are on the pitch, they get the credit because they're trying really, really hard. 
um, some of its quality, some of its some of its hard work. But you know, they deserve the they deserve the plaudits for it. Let's be Good honest. Good question. There is when when did when did we last go nine unbeaten? Can't Probably... actually think of any time recently. I mean, was it in the championship? It will have been um, Pardew. We were like, it was it was either eleven or thirteen unbeaten. We were one of the last teams unbeaten in Europe. That was one. It was Colaccini, Stephen Taylor in defence. That was mm-hmm. those days. Um, might have been the eleven, twelve, or twelve, thirteen. I'll go and have a look. Yeah. But it was, it was uh, Waggy Angler says, uh, "You guys with the beards should email Manscaped, get some sponsorship." Um, <laughs> uh, Ellis says, "We're hey three points." Uh, Jamie Rubin's latest tweet. I have not seen it because I'm not on Twitter. Uh, yeah, it's amazing. I'm buzzing here, Matthew. Uh, Bruno is going to be so good when he really gets used to the Premier League. Um, Gemma, good evening. I read Paul and Alex. Um, Ian says, uh, nine unbeaten is the longest of any team in the Premier League this season, by the way. Uh, yeah, stick that up your pipe and smoke it, Simon Jordan, Gabby Agbon Lahore, all those lovely people at Talk Sport. Uh, yeah. Uh, good evening. Um, Dubravka is mint, man. It's like having two guys in goal. Uh, Matthew says, I would be very happy with a draw, but to get another win is just amazing. I mean, I did say before the game, Alex, that I would take a, a, take a point because of the situation we've been put in because of the injuries um, and, and the fact that it was very, very... It looked a very difficult game again. But I did also say... Uh, let's remember back to West Ham when we found out that the ASM wasn't playing and everybody was saying, oh, we're going to get thumped. Uh, and we actually should have actually won that game as well. Uh, I'll get your thoughts on it in a second. Sam, thank you for the eight uh, eight dollars New Zealand dollars eight ninety nine. Does Bruno start against Chelsea? Possibly. Uh, I guess time will tell. Um, but go on, Alex. Um, yeah, I mean, I didn't think we were going to get thumped against West Ham. We just, I thought ASM was because um, they they had fullback problems at that time, and I think they still they still do. Um, and I think it would have been a good game for Maxi to to attack. Uh, but we, you know, we won the midfield battle against West Ham. Ultimately, it was Suchek and Rice who were having problems in their own box, balls bouncing yep. everywhere, not tracking yep. people. So we did all right there uh, without mm. Maxi, to be fair. True. Um, but our midfield, for yeah, for for Chelsea, I, I really do feel like we need Joe Linton because we, let's be honest, Kovacic, Jorginho, like we we need a bit, and Kante, we we need a bit more umph. Um, yeah. We need somebody who's who, like a Joel and who's going to be aggressive in there and not take any shit, basically. Yeah, I mean, um, we, Bruno's incredible, but, you know, he's put, you're putting up against three of the best midfielders in Europe or possibly the world. Um, yeah. It, it's, you, we've, got to take, we've got to take whatever we see on Sunday with a pinch of salt, to be fair. We'll he see. could, in, in theory, he could rest either Willock or Shelby. You know, yeah, he could do a, he, but I mean... He's got that option. As, when but they blew it, the ninth, when they blew the full time whistle, I was half thinking, "God, I can see him cha- making six or seven changes for Sunday because <laughs> the lads were just absolutely knackered." Yeah, um, we'll see, we'll see. Uh, Jeanette, thank you very much, Jeanette Johnson, for your five pound super chat. Hi, Paul, great result, well done to the fans that travelled down. So happy for them. King Howe loved it. Yeah, the fans are incredible again. Um, you know, just just absolutely world class. Uh, Dave says, quack, quack, fuck off. You can't get that standard of commentary anywhere else. Uh, indeed, uh, I don't know what the hell I said half the time, but qu- I, I do remember saying quack, quack, fuck off. Something about, uh, you know, breaking his duck. Uh, crucial block from Willock near the end and Dubravka with a couple of top glass saves. Um, Trolls is very happy about having 31 points at the minute. Kendo says, remember all the talk that the club don't know what they're doing back in December? Yep. Listen, people were jumping on the bandwagon saying Eddie Howe was, wasn't good enough. And, you know, I mean, Alex, we look back to, you know, when they were saying about Steven Gerrard and saying, oh, you, you missed you missed getting Steven Gerrard. Um, as it stands now, you know, who would you have rather had? A hundred percent Eddie Howe. Yeah. But that, that's exactly. just down to my personality and style of like how I like football and watch football, you know, stats. Mm. Um you know, learning, trying to be creative, improving your game. This is this is all what Howe does. His team's very into stats. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, he went and did a lot of research when he wasn't managing. Went and learned from different managers, different countries, and that that is right up my street. So I I love the kind of manager he is. He's willing to learn and change, and that, I think that's the kind of manager we could do with long term. So yeah, because he's willing to grow. He's not just mm-hmm. going to sit with this style. So you know, the yeah. question is down the line is is big personalities and th- you know there, there are things that you can't. Um, learn for and prep for that mm. we'll, he'll have to f- 
deal with in the future. And we'll see. We'll cross those bridges when, when we come to them. So, yeah. Uh, Mark says, uh, Shelby gets far too much criticism off some fans. He's improved loads under Eddie Howe. I agree. Uh, Julie says, evening, Paul and Alex. I'm over the moon that Wood scored. Well done, Wood. Well done, Tune, on another win. Uh, Rick says, Paul, absolutely fantastic commentary. Thanks. Uh, although you gave, I don't know what he's finished with there, but uh, thank you very much. Um, Bruno, start. Wood and Bruno can score. Dan Byrne, very good. Another six points, and there's no way we're going down. All hail Eddie Howe. Uh, Invincibles 2023. Here we come, says Chesra. Ches, I think you've been res- just really fighting too many sharks lately. Hashtag cans from Jordy Riffs. Uh, it's all about the confidence, and we are top of the league in that department. Uh, I had faith in Wood the whole time. His, his time has finally come. Um, it was just nice, that goal, Alex, because, you know, he, he anticipated the ball coming over the Southampton defender's head, uh, and he, he, he connected with it perfectly. You know, there was no chance that Fraser Forster was ever saving that because he just... You know, he'd have to be Superman. Um, but it was the way that Wood con- connected with the ball. That's what I want to see from Chris Wood. You know, giving defenders hell like that to know that if they have any percentage chance of missing that ball, Chris Wood is going to be there to finish it off. Yeah, I mean, it's been coming. His increased fitness in the last couple of weeks. He's looked better positionally. He's looked a bit sharper. Um, that looked like a Burnley goal, to be fair. Uh, and I fully expect him to get another three or four of them before the end of the season because he's he's looked like it in recent weeks. Mm. Um, I'm still not particularly happy with how little the ball sticks when it goes up to him. But um, the things we've asked him to improve, he's improved and he's been doing it fairly quickly as well. Yeah. Um, he's, he's, he's looking a lot more mobile. He's turning quicker. He's anticipating things quicker. Um, you know, we we can only ask of him what he is. We can't ask him to do running runs in behind and bent runs. He's you know he's a big target man, but mm. he's a lot of what is his job. He's doing a lot better, um, and I can see him getting on the score sheet more if he if he keeps doing this because we're going to have easier games than Brighton Southampton. They were really hard games. Yeah, you know, we've definitely. got Norwich to come again. We've got, we've got Palace. We've got a few more games where we can be a bit more competitive with the ball, um, and he's going to get a lot more chances. So. Definitely see him score him some more. And, yeah, well done, Chris Wood. Yep. Uh, Ricky says we're now closer to ninth place than the relegation zone. I mean, that is incredible. I mean, ninth place are Aston Villa, and they're on um, 36 points. We're five points behind Villa. I mean, that... We just keep getting points every game. I mean, it's bizarre. Every game it's, is just it's points. It's incredible. Uh, but here, oh, we're on the way up. Uh, Fats says, even upon Stato, how are the lads? Amazing three points and performance from the whole team. Bruno's goal was like a Bruce Lee sidekick. Uh, it was. It was incredible. Uh, Wacky says, um, it's reset for Sunday now for the players. Hectic schedule. Think Chelsea have uh, Champions League early next week too, so might rest a few players. Um, yeah, they do have champ. I'm sure they do, actually. Yeah, uh, they play we- tonight as well, so. Yeah. What was the score tonight? I think they well, they beat Norwich, did they? I, I didn't see the level. score. I have no idea with the other scores. I was just concentrating on Newcastle, to be honest. Uh, our two goals uh, from two of our new signings, they're all so mad. All I've seen is the fans complaining. Oh, dear. Saltiness, saltiness. Anyone else forget what losing was like at 1-0? Uh, yeah, it was a bit strange, wasn't it? Uh, new team says Jordy Riffs. Uh, we won this game without Trippier, Mankio, Wilson, Joe Linton, and ASM. Uh, and need to keep the momentum for Sunday. Haas says, quack, quack, fuck off. <laughs> Uh, Chris Wood got a goal now. Indeed, he has. Uh, roll on Sunday. Chelsea, the Geordie ball breakers are coming to town. Uh, new team photo is up. It's class. Uh, I'll have a look on the website later on. Uh, Willick is young, remember, lads. He is. Uh, they should be straight back off to Saudi after the Everton game. I know. that It seems to have done them the world of good going away, didn't it? Um, right. Just a quick one. If you are enjoying the show tonight, guys, please do hit the like button. Uh, been a long, long shift tonight, but uh, really enjoyed it. Uh, if you're new to the channel, we've got over 1,100 watching again at the minute, which is fantastic. So if you're new to the channel, uh, please do consider subscribing. Uh, lots of great shows coming up, especially in the next week or so uh, and for the future. So please do join the family and subscribe. Uh, you can also join as a member if you hit the join button underneath the video. And uh, you can also uh, donate to the channel using the Super Chat. Hit the dollar sign at the bottom of the live comments. That will take you through that way, uh, as so many people have already done tonight, really, really kind, kindly. 
And of course, a big shout out to Geordie Riffs, our sponsors, premium guitar lessons for beginners and children based here in the Northeast, guitar repairs and servicing in which they're offering 10% off each one of your first ones. Uh, they've also got a recording studio available and they will also do a first guitar lesson free of charge if you mention to them the tune review. You can catch them at geordieriffs.co.uk, Instagram at Geordie Riffs and Facebook at Geordie Riffs Official. Um, was there anybody tonight that you thought really struggled, Alex? Um, Kraft. Kraft in the first half so badly. So, mm. so badly. He played as a centre. He played as a... He looks constantly like he's playing uh, as a centre-back on the right side of a back three. He just drops into that deep position. He did it so many times. Um, I mean, possibly the instruction was for Murphy to drop back, but maybe that was the instruction. Maybe I'm just mm. wrong. So, it's, it is very possible. Um, but he just didn't look comfortable or confident. They were driving into the box. Um, and again, I'm really happy we won. The lads played amazing. But we are so fortunate that the Brighton and Southampton, that their finishes weren't at the races um, because it was so dangerous. And for yeah. everybody who keeps saying, you know, that we're too harsh on Kraft, yet again, this is another week in a row where people are targeting his side and they're doing that for a reason. Yeah. I, you know, I apologize if you like Kraft and I'm very happy with his second half performance. He tried so hard. He put in some cracking challenges, you know, great stuff. And we love the passion. But we also need the quality. Um, I mean, it's it's fine now we've got the points. Mm -hmm. But if we hadn't have been doing this well, you know, we would have needed a bit more quality out of him. So um, I now Manquillo looks fit and happy. I I wouldn't be surprised to see him coming in on Sunday, to be fair, anyway, for rotation. And then as long as he doesn't get injured, I'll see Manquillo. I, I probably suspect that Manquillo will stay in the side at right back. It would be weird if Kraft gets back in now for me. Yeah. Yeah. Uh... Unbelievable results uh, with who we had out. Uh, we can go into the game on Sunday and think that we could defo get something from the bridge. Uh, the irony of the two new signings scoring, it was always going to happen, guys. Uh, I'm so glad Wood finally got his first goal. Uh, it's surreal. I'm in a daze trying to get my head around the current results. Brilliant end to my birthday. A big shout out to the entire squad for their commitment to the cause. Um, happy birthday once again, AJ. Uh, Matt Target is not getting enough credit for his defence. He's been great. Uh, well, it, I, I think proof of that, uh, Alex, was the fact that the, the the amount of times that Southampton targeted our right hand side and, and not the left, because they they knew they'd have more opportunity probably against uh, Kraft and Murphy rather than Fraser and uh, and Matty Target. Hundred percent. So yeah, no, the co the comments is right. Yeah, we I haven't said anything about Target, but I think Paul mentioned him. Um, no, you're right. He's been incredible. But there's there's eleven players on the pitch, and everybody played that. They played their hearts out today, so it's difficult to give everybody the time. Um, no, Target, again, is so, so solid. Just Premier League quality at left-back. Reliable. Um, there, there were a few times today, uh, this ha this happens a lot, actually, where he, he, he does go forward and our midfield muck about and lose the ball and Burn has to clean up the hole. But he normally does it. He, he did it today. He did it against Brentford. He's been doing, you know, so it's worked. We just need to keep an eye on that. You know, if Target wanders forward, we've got to be careful we don't leave that big space because Burns not going to get it right every time. Mm -hmm. um, so, but no, Target was, and that, that's not Target's fault, is it? So he, he was incredible. Very, very steady. Very, very steady. I'm confident having him on the left back for Sunday um, unless, well, unless, unless Richie gets any minutes at left back, which I'd be very surprised. Um, well, listen, I'd, I'd, I'd be very surprised if we see Richie, to be honest. Uh, watching all the way from the USA, North Carolina, hell of a game, lads. Thank you very much. Uh, Newcastle, the new Chelsea. Uh, Bruno's vision is mint. Too quick for the other players at times, uh, but can't wait to see him playing in the middle with J7. Uh, I think Julie's unhappy with what's happened tonight in a quiz. Um, unknown shadow, that's about the 13th time you've written that comment, maybe. I've, I've, I've seen it. Um, uh, after what Pot Noodle said, it was written in the stars that our new signings would score. Uh, yeah, uh, it's sure, by the way, like the singer. I don't care. Um, Mark says, uh, reminds me of Kim Kev days. The sky's the limit under Eddie Howe. Uh, CFC Florida, thanks for your $10 super chat. Uh, what a match. Great team spirit. Bruno del delivers a truly Brazilian goal. Well, it was, wasn't it? I mean, it was a truly, it was a Brazilian style goal. Yeah. He was ready for that. He was in position for for that move 
before it connected with Dan Byrne's head. He knew They've exactly what was going to happen. Because you saw Dan Byrne make the runner, you know, to the back post around the defender. Um, it, it was, he did it again. We, we we had another corner about five minutes later. He did exactly the same thing. And nobody is going to beat him in the air. So yeah. it, it, it's, a, it's a ploy. It, it's definitely been worked on. Uh, and you could see that. And no, like I said, nobody's going to beat Dan Byrne in the air, knocks it across, and it causes absolute bedlam. Yeah, I mean, this is why this is why I love Eddie Howe because in the last few weeks I've been critical of the fact that Dan Burns not really been on the end of anything set piece wise, and for somebody who's six foot seven, you know, it, I wanted him to do a bit more in the box. And today he, he got three of those identical balls to the back post, and he got on the end of all three, and one of them was a goal. So brilliant, you know, great stuff in training to get that to get that set up. Good work from Burn to get to, to do that, and you know mm. we've got the little little magician there who just knew where it was coming. I mean, yeah. the audacity he could have stood for he could have stood forward facing. He didn't need to be stood the wrong way, did he? And yeah, he did it anyway. And it's he still typical scored. Brazilian, so, though, isn't it? That's the kind of yeah. flair that you get from a Brazilian. Uh, it just crazy. Uh, Paul, look at the league. Not one player we have has more than seven goals this season. It shows the attack needs upgrading in the summer. Ginger, we know that. We know that, but hey, come on, man. Nine games unbeaten. Uh, there's no way we can be negative. Uh, I reckon we can beat Chelsea 2-1 as well. Come on the tune. That's the spirit, Barbara. Uh, how bringing it out of them at the, all at the moment? The buzz is high and it's shown with the players uh, all battling to make sure they can keep their place in the team. Uh, indeed, uh, Ian saying to Ginger, just hang on uh, and get behind the team for now. It will be definitely upgraded. I think Cher will now, uh, now play with a proper centre-back and burn is the key here. The cells who club captain my ass. He's not getting. Uh, I can't see him getting back in the team. I mean, he didn't want to bring off an injured chair, did he? So, no, no. That that's a good point, actually. It's uh, you know, I, I, I saw J- Jamal the cells go out and warm up when Fre- um Cher was down, uh, and I thought, oh god, you know, it was like, but he, he got up and he just got on with it, and I think, uh, you know, he just doesn't want to break this partnership up uh, at all, at all. Uh, saw a video of Chris Wood getting cheered as he walks into the changing room and good on him, good on him and I saw that, the, you know um, Bruno was uh, mobbed after the game as well um, just awesome uh, Paul says 20 out of 24 points in 2022 what odds would you have got for that bet Ooh, I tell you what, anybody putting that bet on will be a rich man tonight, I tell you no doubt about it uh, the money you spent in January was just the pocket change the owners had in their change pot uh, yes, indeed. Um, Kraft gave everything for the tune tonight. He did. Look, did. Uh, we, we've said we've already said this. You know, it, it, we are not definitely not going at the players at all for their um, work rate, effort, and what they put in tonight. Because every single game now, we're seeing that we're seeing a hundred percent, one hundred and ten percent effort from every player on that pitch. Look, like I said before, we know that some of those players. Um, aren't going to hit the standard that, that the new Cassie Knight would be looking for over the next coming seasons when, you know, the owners want to move us up the table and start winning things. But for now, these are the guys that we have. And to be fair to them, these are the guys that were, you know, rock bottom earlier in the season. And these are the guys that have listened to what the new manager has said and the new coaches have said. They've took it on board and they've worked their asses off to get us back to 14th in the table. So uh, as much as we all praising Eddie Howe for, and, and Tyndall and the backroom staff for what, what they're doing at the club right now. Those players take a lot of credit as well, every single one of them, because even when they're not playing very well, Alex, they're still given the role. And and that is a completely different mindset to what we've been used to. Yeah, I mean, a, a stat which shows what you're talking about is we had 29% possession in the second half. Mm. We didn't concede. So, you know... They all grafted and they all did their bit. Um, you know, it's twenty nine percent possession is not is not a lot at all. It's nothing. Um, and they they well, given, kept their given shape, the players you know. given the players that we've had out tonight, uh, I think you can understand it because I'm sure Eddie would have planned for Joe Linton to be on that pitch tonight. I'm in no doubt about it. And and like we've talked about earlier, um, we kind of missed that combat. If uh, you know strength of Joe Linton, if you like, just to, to, to win the ball and, and, yeah. and give give those other midfielders a bit of protection because we, we didn't yeah. have it. 
we didn't have anybody to break up the play for sure. Uh, people were very panicky as well. This is this is what people. Uh, this is the underrated thing about Joe Linton is he's quite happy to pick up the ball at the edge of our of our area and just carefully drive it past three players and calm it down. Mm-hmm. We didn't have anybody to do that today. Um, granted, the lads were good and we didn't concede in the second half, but they were very erratic. They were just clearing it, booting it to anybody. And it was just coming straight back at us really quickly. That was a, a bombardment. Um, and we needed a bit more respite. And you I mean, know, tight, legs and kick, the tight leg kicks in then, doesn't it? When we're doing that, we're just trying yeah. to get the ball clear. I mean, um, there was a few times even Matty Target tried to clear it. It went straight to a Saints player. Uh, yeah. it just, but it's that's... a rabbit hole, right? The, yeah. If you do a poor clearance, it comes back. You get more 100%. tired. You do a poorer clearance. You know, you, yeah. somebody needs to step up and get the right ball out to, to, mm. to give the lads a breather. Because... Yeah. They need a breather sometimes. Yep. Uh, Ken, Ken Dors is uh, 10 points ahead of Burnley. Wow. And Everton only one point ahead of them. A minute's silence for Donny van der Beek as his career choice has just died. Uh, yeah. Uh, there's been, there was a few of those little things on uh, 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 Facebook today where, you know, there the were picturing uh, van der Beek and uh, the comment he made about not wanting to go to Newcastle because he didn't want a relegation fight. Um, yeah. How's that going for you, Donny? Uh Listen to Simon Jordan yesterday. He doesn't like Eddie Howe. Reckons he'll be sacked in 18 months because he's not a top manager. And for Botland Celtic, what a clown. Well, we know he's a clown. Listen, I, I, do, do you really think Eddie Howe will take any notice of what that pleb's got to say? Absolutely not. Uh, Richard Bell, thank you very much for the £3 super sticker, mate. Really kind of you. Thank you so much. Uh, Jack says, fantastic commentary tonight, Paul. Never enjoyed a win so much without actually being at the match. Uh, thank you very much. Really appreciate that. Um, can we talk about Wood breaking his duck? So happy for him. Uh, yes, we've mentioned uh, Duck Duck Fuck Off quite a few things, Quack Quack or whatever it was I said. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it, listen, fantastic that, that both of the guys got off the mark. Um, it's just we're not used to the, the, the we're not used to this um, you know the, this good feel factor at the minute that's that, that's going around Newcastle United. Um, it's it's been a long time since we've we've actually had a run like this or, or, or been confident like this. Uh, because a few months ago, if we were going into a game at Chelsea at Stamford Bridge, we'd all be saying five six nil to Chelsea. Um, we're not this time because it's it's the way they put a fight up. It's the way they defend, and we know that Eddie Howe knows how to defend against Chelsea. He knows how to line up against them. Um, so it's going to be very exciting actually to see what he actually, what he does. Uh, hi everybody, great show, Paul and the team. Can't wait for uh, sauerkraut's whinging. Um, I actually didn't realise that Hasenhudel was Austrian um, until before the match. I thought he was German. Um, But I did make a a remark during the commentary that uh, he'll be back off to Austria in the hills, um, yodelling and uh, ringing his cowbells and uh, very, very upset. Uh, Did anyone listen to that knobhead on TalkSport yesterday? No. And uh, he's (laughs) he's just a knobhead. Going to take some getting used to this playing well, Malarkey, but I'm here for it. Uh, Darren says Europa League is in reach. We are looking up now, not down. Can you imagine we qualified for Europe? I mean, I, I don't think we will. I don't think we in a million years we will. But could you imagine? What do we need for conference? Seventh or eighth? Seventh. That's forty-five sure points. Well, so uh, n- no. <laughs> no, I mean Wolves we'd are in need, eighth on forty-three. They're still twelve points ahead of we'd, us. We'd it's need to win. Happen. We'd need to win another seven or eight on the yeah. trot, and we'd need them to collapse. So, yeah. but we needed our, our resurgence to start. You know, four or five weeks sooner for that to even be in the conversation. So, unfortunately, not. But it's still, still good to dream, I guess. Well, you know, why not? Um, I, I'm sure we're all going to be dreaming in the summer about what players we're going to be bringing in. Uh, so why not Why not get started early? Uh, James, a fantastic commentary tonight. Really enjoyed it. Congratulations to yourself and your team. Thanks, James. Um, CFC Florida with another $5 super chat. Great time to take on Chelsea FC at the bridge. They're all over the shop at the minute, obviously, Chelsea, with what's going on with their owner. I mean, it's a very, very strange situation. And... Um, you know, not being able to sell tickets so they can only let the season ticket holders in. Um, you know, I know there'll be away fans there on Sunday because the tickets have already been sold. Uh, but it's it's a very, very strange situation now. Yeah, um, I don't know. I can't see it affecting their performance on the pitch. They've got seasoned internationals who have won every trophy under the sun, pretty much. I don't think it'll make a difference to their team. Um, I think we'll still have to fight 
and it's still going to be a very very difficult game. Um, yeah. You know they've just they've just gone. Yeah, it was three one against Norwich. They've just beaten tonight, so I don't think that's going to have any bearing on their on their players. Not at all. Unfortunately, it's uh, yeah. I still I still think it's just going to be the same as it was, regardless. Yeah. Uh, Darren's asking if Joel Linton will get back in the team. I think he will for what the exact reason we've been discussing tonight. Um, just, I mean, it, it's it, it's got to be, you know, we need that enforcer. And, and and with the three of them that play tonight, we don't have a protector in there. And, you know, it, it feels very bizarre still talking about Joel Linton like that, but he is literally that kind of t- that kind of player that we need in the middle. Yeah, we... Again, zero aerial drills won from the midfield. Tackles were fairly low. Possession was really low. We didn't have the out ball. Um, yeah, it's there to see. It's it's really there to see. We we need Joe Linton. If just because we won doesn't suddenly mean that this midfield should continue. It yeah. was obvious where the deficit was, and it was you know we needed we needed the enforcer. Big Joe yeah. has to come straight back in when he's fit. Um, and obviously we don't. I mean, we haven't mentioned that yet, but injuries. I mean, Bruno went off, obviously. Fingers crossed that's just a, like a surface thing and he's fine. I think it was cramp. I, I um, think he just, just cramped up and they didn't want to risk him getting any muscle injuries, yeah. um, you know, after he suffered Joe's the cramp. the same as well. Yeah, which, you know what, it, it, it happens, um, you know, because he's, he's it's his first start um, and, you know, you can do all the training you want, but when you're, you're in that kind of cauldron of a football match like it was today, when he's doing a lot of defending as well, um, you know, he, he worked his ass off, as did Fraser. I mean, I mean Fraser comes off. Uh, God, he must get like 20 hours sleep. And, you it's know, funny he's you just say incredible. Fraser. I mean, Fraser's the reason Bruno got injured, in my opinion, today. Really? Um, yeah. So Bruno drove the ball out, did a nice little move. Uh, he, he, he looked up for runners. Mm-hmm. Um, and Fraser just, he was tired. I mean, fair enough. He was tired. You know, you get tired. You just tried very hard. Um, and because there was no one to pass to, he didn't have that. The same problem Shelby's had in, you know, for a long time for us, no runners and he just got mm. clattered. Um, yeah. And then he, that yeah. was when it started. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm not going to do a hot take. I'm going to ask a question to you and to other people as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, I know Fraser has been incredible, incredible. He's been so, so good. Um, you know, goals, assists, work rate. He's been amazing. But are we concerned that he has to come off really early every single match is anybody concerned about that or you know what i was going to mention it during the during the commentary that um you know it it would be nice to see him complete a full 90 minutes um but then on the flip side of that you could say well he just puts 110 percent in and he goes as long as he can um it it, listen to, to get what we're getting out of fraser now compared to what we had last season i think is Chalk and cheese. It's 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 incredible. Um, so I'm not I'm not too worried about that if I'm honest. Um, yeah. <clears throat> but I would like to see him be on the pitch a lot longer. But yeah. it's an know, interesting question though. Do we think we can get indeed. ninety minutes out of him consistently, or do we need to do something? Does he need more fullback help in order mm. to get that? Like, what is what is the reason he can't do ninety minutes consistently? I'm not I'm not sure. Maybe it's yeah. purely the work rate. Um, but yeah, you know, it, it, in, it could in be a really term, simple thing. It, it um, may not be anything. Sinister, it's just that he's he's he puts his graft in 120, yeah, no, definitely 50 percent or whatever it is. And he, he, you know, Eddie just brings him off. Um, Ellis says, uh, seriously, the commentary was great. My mom said it actually made football entertain and she was laughing all the way. Uh, brilliant, thank you very much, Ellis. Uh, right, it is now time for the um, the player ratings, Alex. And we're going to get you to start with Mr. Dubravka. Um, Oh, I'll give him. I'll give him an eight. I'll give him a little bit more than a seven. He can have an eight because he made a couple of cracking saves. Mm-hmm. Uh, he didn't flap like he had a couple of flaps at Brighton, and he didn't flap today. He looked stronger. He looked a bit more, you know, confident, and he did the right thing. So he, he gets an eight. He did a good job. Um, uh, where's that comment going? It was about. Uh, oh yeah. Uh... Uh, Jason says it's because he's got tiny legs. He's doing twice the work as others. He is really small. Remember, I think it's it's um, yeah, he, he's really small. Uh, moving on to the player ratings, Emil Kraft. I'm going to give Emil Kraft a seven. Um, I thought you know, despite the fact that he was getting the run around a bit in the first half, I think second half 
Um, you know, again, when he was getting taken on, he didn't give up and he got back and he made some decent clearances. Uh, so for I'm going to give him a, a seven. Uh, left back now for you, Matty Target. Um, oh, I feel like I've got to give him a seven, but mm-hmm. I think it's more because I, I'd like to give him more, but he, he can't have more because they didn't challenge him too much, like as much on that side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and we didn't quite have, we didn't really have enough of the ball for him to do nice things with Fraser. So mm-hmm. it's not his fault specifically, but no, he was very no. solid, gets a seven. Cool. Uh, Centre backs, uh, I'll start with Fabian Shaw. I'm going to give a uh, share or share. I believe in love, in love. Um, I'm going to give Shaw a share of nine. Uh, I thought he was outstanding. Simple as, simple as that. Um, you know, considering he went down twice with an injury, he just gets up, he battles on. Um, he, he, he uh, look, I, I think this guy has come and is starting to play exactly how we've seen him play at international level. We all said, oh, he plays brilliantly for Switzerland, getting man of the matches left, right and centre, uh, but we don't really see it for, for Newcastle. I, I think we're seeing it now. So it's it's a nine for me. Um, moving on to Dan Byrne, Alex. Uh, Dan Byrne, see, I was going to give him an eight, but I want to give him the same as Shah because I think he did great. So, mm-hmm. I mean, he could have an eight or a nine. Is 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 headers, improvements in like offensively set pieces, his assist, um, great. Like he's even again, he's people talking about his age. Well, he's improving. So you know, age don't mean anything. He's learning. He's improving. Yeah. He's passing nine clearances today. You know, a leader. He was a monster. He was a monster. Mm. I'll give him a nine as well. He was an absolute monster. Cool. Uh, Mark says, great show again, Tune Review. Uh, makes my week tuning into the channel. Uh, another amazing win and great to see Wood and Grenades off the mark. Paul, what is the uh, first song that was played at the start? Uh, if you want it, just drop me an email and I'll send you the MP3 through no problem at all. Uh, my email address is right at the bottom of the description. Uh, so drop me an email just with what you want. Uh, you know, Just say, can I have a copy of the song? Uh, and I'll send it through to you. Uh, no problem at all. Um, Commentary wins the trophy. Thanks, Barney. Um, Willock never looks happy. Uh, he does at the end. Uh, look, he, he, he's concentrating. Let's just put it down to concentration. Um, right, I'll go for Bruno, and I'm going to give Bruno um, an eight. Uh, simply for his odd... I, 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 I don't think he was quite a nine, if I'm honest, uh, because, you know, there, there was times he lost the ball tonight, but again, that's because he's just... It's his first start in the Premier League, and it's um, you know when he's been coming on lately. There's been tired legs around him tonight. He was there from the start, um, but listen, to, to to get an eight on your first start is absolutely fantastic for me. Um, the goal was outstanding. Uh, you know that will be played over and over again. It'll be very interesting to see how many times that does get played because and that, uh, you know, Willock it, header, it's Newcastle. That he Sorry? should have had an assist. That cross yes. for Willock as well. I feel like Willock should have got that on target. Maybe free not header, a goal, but it should header. have been on target. Yep, without so a he's, doubt. He's definitely got it. Yep, no doubt about it. Um, Daniel, good evening, matey. Hope you're well, bud. Um, do you think Eddie Howe should get manager of the season? Uh, if we stay up, yes. Uh, well, if we stay up, what the hell am I talking about? Um, listen, it, it, let's see where we finish. Um, and I think if we finish around 10th or 11th, this man definitely deserves manager of the season to take a team who was bottom. And let's not forget, we were adrift at the bottom. To, to come back and finish mid-table uh, is is inc- an incredible achievement. Um, so, yeah. Um, and I hope you're doing well, Daniel. Uh, keep your head up, mate. I know you've been through a bit of a difficult time lately, but uh, uh, keep your head up, mate. Uh, Bruno Ronaldinho Gomez says Bob. Um, where are we up to now? I'll, uh, Joe Willock, mate. Uh, Willock. I'm going to give him a seven. He had a poor first half, but again, he's young. He's he's starting to listen. He trusts his manager, as we've seen in the interviews. He improved a few things in the second half. Yeah, he was trying to get some driving runs. His passing again was really tidy. Um, he's not the finished product, but good player. We need to keep him. Gets yeah. a seven. Well done. Well done, Willock. Cool. Uh, John Joe Shelby for me. I'll give John Joe a seven. Uh, again, you know, he give his work rate was outstanding. Again, getting back and defending and stuff like that. Uh, I don't think he, 
you know, he, he created the, I mean, that cross for the goal was fantastic, wasn't it? I mean, it was just ping. But that is vintage John Joe Shelby. Um, but uh, again, he just go, he, he's going through the game now. Just, you know, he, he doesn't try and stand out and be the main man. He doesn't try these Hollywood passes every time he's got the ball. He's just doing things really simple now. Uh, and then when he the sees block, a Hollywood pass, yeah. The block from the cross when he yes. stepped up, like yep. he's still got that intelligence about him. For sure. Yeah. Um, uh, Derek says St. Mary's uh, was flooded. Uh, the water was found to be coming from the manager's office. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, right. Where are we up to now? The front three, aren't we? Um, you have, uh, we'll give you Murphy. Oh, that's a tricky one. I mean, it's difficult for me to say what was, what was him making mistakes and not on, because I don't know what his instructions were in terms of like, was he trying to wing back sometimes? So I don't know what was his fault necessarily, but he, yeah. he wasn't great today. He didn't get a lot of, he wasn't released as a runner. He made, he only made a few, he made like one or two runs early on. He struggled positionally. Mm-hmm. Again, he, he worked hard, but there were, there were a lot of moments in the first half where he wasn't working hard. Actually, he was one of the ones that wasn't working that hard. If I, if I could say that about anybody, um, there were a few times where Chris Wood actually floated into right mid because Murphy was out of position, which, you know, goes to show. Um, I, I'm going to give him a six. I don't, I don't think he was great. Yeah, yeah I, I, I would agree. Uh, I thought it was one of his poorer games tonight. Uh, Keith uh, Dites, thanks for the $10 super chat. Just stopping by to throw you some coin. Keep up the good work. Uh, saw the whole watch along. Uh, is top half of the table out of the question now? Uh, I think top half is, is, is going to be a fight. I mean, but then again, Villa... They're on 30. We're five points behind Villa, so top half might be on. Um, we'll see. We'll see how well we do. Um, I'm going now for Fraser. Uh, Fraser, again, for me, worked his ass off, but he, he didn't do really anything outstanding with the ball tonight for me. Um, so I'm just going to give him I'm giving him a straightforward seven. Um, I think, um, you know, he, he, again, the work rate was fantastic, but there wasn't much in, in the way of creativity. Um, but... You know, people may agree or may not agree. I just think he, he, he just... Yeah. I mean, he gave the ball to Shelby for his cross because um, yeah, he saw him in a better place. Alex, Alex, that was like a, a, a what, a two-yard pass? It was, it was, yeah, it, yeah. I know I know what you mean. He he, he did make the run and, and then he, he linked up with target. And then he, in that... Yeah. Funny enough, it was one of those triangles we were talking about a couple of weeks ago. Um, I, mean, I know it's only a two-yard sort of pass. It's, it's one of those things that Maxi wouldn't get, though, is it? Like Ooh, Fraser, see C- Fraser Ooh, sees that the... they'll be coming for you. Well, it's not Maxi's game. Maxi would have just dribbled and run into the box, yeah, he and maybe yeah. he would have scored in a different way. But Fraser sees that picture because he's a lot older, a lot more experienced. Mm. Um, so maybe. Okay. Uh, well, you can have um, uh, Chris Wood. Yeah, uh, Chris Wood. I mean. I'm gonna. I'm gonna have to give him a nine. If I've given Sher, if Sher and uh, Burn have got nines, purely for his determination, uh, he he wasn't. He didn't seem as bothered that he's not scored today. I think maybe the assist last week has given him a bit more confidence. Yeah, yeah. He just doesn't yeah, yeah. care as much because he just didn't seem to care. He was like he's just trying, um, fitter, more mobile, making better runs, contributing a bit more. Scored the goal. Well done. It was a cracking goal. Um, I would like to see a little bit more from him, though, in terms of when the ball goes up, mm-hmm. please make it stick sometimes because it just doesn't. Um, that's the only criticism I'd have of him. Um, and Eddie Howe said in his press conference that it does stick. And I, I I, can't see it. I can't see where it just doesn't. I can't see it. Maybe somebody, if somebody can show me some clips of where it does stick when it goes up to him, because yeah. I, I just can't see it. But he gets a nine. He's done amazing. He's improved. And I'm I'm excited to see him, uh, you know, against against Chelsea and see what he can do against Everton. You know, mm-hmm. let's kick on. Definitely. Um, let me see where we at. Right, uh, Eddie Howe. We've got to agree on a, a, a Eddie Howe. Uh, you know, an average score. But listen, uh, for me, Eddie Howe got it spot on again. Um, I think his substitutions were fine today. I didn't have a problem with them. Um, I thought that the players that needed to come on did. He, he wasn't given much choice really as to, to who to sort of bring on as substitutes anyway. Um, but look, he, he, he's got us so compact. And, and so many times I said in commentary that 
Southampton were just knocking the ball around so many times. They were looking up for that killer pass and it just wasn't there. Looking up for a cross, it wasn't there. We just shut them down. So even though we didn't have a lot of possession, we shut them down completely. Um, and it wasn't until the latter half of the second half when we started to really tire. They got a few opportunities in there. Um, but I thought Eddie got it spot on, so I'm going with a nine. Yep, 100% agree. I mean, le- at the end of the day, let's be honest, we didn't look like the better team against Brighton or Southampton, in my opinion, over the 90 minutes in both games. But mm-hmm. we won both games. So that's yep. down to system. Definitely. Um, and the lads working hard, so yeah, he definitely deserves the nine. A lot of credit. I, I agree completely. And of course, the Newcastle United fans, uh, it's a ten uh, as usual uh, because we are simply awesome. Uh, right, we've come to the end of the uh, review now. Uh, it's been a long night, but it's been a thoroughly enjoyable night. Uh, thank you to everybody that tuned in for the commentary. Thank you to everybody that's tuned in to the uh, the review tonight. Um, Show's coming up tomorrow night at 8 p.m. We've got the match preview for the Chelsea game. Uh, So a very, very quick turnaround. Uh, So join me, Danielle and Alex, for that as we look ahead to the game and see what kind of side that Eddie Howe could possibly put out. Uh, 1.30 on Sunday afternoon is, of course, the live watch along with uh, commentary from myself again on the game. Uh, Kickoff is 2 p.m. Really looking forward to that game. And then on Sunday evening, we have the match review from the Chelsea game with me, Danielle and Alex again. So uh, plenty of shows to uh, to get excited about. Lots coming up, uh, recorded shows. And, and next week, we move into the Everton preview and watch along and things like that. Uh, fan forum. So there's all sorts coming up on the channel. Um, so if you have enjoyed tonight's show, please do hit that like button. Uh, if you're new and you've enjoyed it and you like what you see, please consider subscribing. You can become a member of the Tune Review by hitting the join button at the bottom of the show, at bottom of the show, the bottom of the video. Uh, and uh, thank you to everybody that has sent in super chats during the watch along and uh, during this show tonight. Very, very kind. Thank you so much to each and every one of you. Uh, and thank you to Geordie Riffs uh, for sponsoring the channel, Premium Guitar Lessons for Beginners and Children based in the Northeast. Uh, guitar repairs and servicing uh, on which they are offering 10% off your first one of each. Uh, They do have a recording studio available and they are offering your first guitar lesson completely free if you mention the tune review. You'll find them at geordieriffs.co.uk, Instagram at geordieriffs and Facebook at geordieriffs official. Uh, Alex, thank you for joining me tonight as usual. Uh, Thank you to the mods backstage. Again, massively uh, hard work done tonight during the watch along and uh during this show well over a thousand viewers again on the on the uh, review show which is incredible so thank you to each and every one of the mods but thank you to everybody out there who's viewed uh and uh subscribed and donated etc and uh just watched us basically thank you to ev- each and every one of you out there it means the world to us and uh we'll see you on the next one tomorrow night at 8 p.m for the chelsea preview good night everybody <laughs>